there'll be panic, widespread panic, because now everybody will be running to the emergency room with every little symptom. State health officials have ordered that UNM, a UNM hospital patient be tested for the potentially deadly Ebola virus. A 30 year old woman just returned from West Africa where the contagious virus is running rampant. She checked herself into the hospital after coming down with Ebola like symptoms. Those symptoms are similar to those found in flu cases too. At this time, health officials are not saying that woman has Ebola, but are not taking any chances. She's in isolation tonight at UNM Hospital. That's where we find News 13's Catherine Rizone. Catherine? Well, that's right, Crystal. Test results should be in very shortly. Only then will doctors know whether or not the woman has Ebola. While doctors say they don't think she does, it doesn't mean that some visitors to the hospital aren't on edge. A 30 year old woman is in isolation at UNM Hospital with symptoms matching that of Ebola, a sore throat, headache, fevers and muscle aches. Officials say she just returned from West Africa where she was a teacher. Health officials say she claims to have had no known exposure to the potentially deadly virus. But doctors here and state officials want to be sure. Our index of suspicion is relatively low. We think that it's likely that she has another illness, but we want to be extremely careful. And that's the reason UNM hospital officials are taking extra safety measures. We um, make sure to minimize the number of people that go in and out of the room. And right now what CDC is recommending, and we're following that recommendation, is actually having people on what are called contact and droplet precautions. That means staff have to wear gowns, gloves, eye protection, and a face mask when they go into a room. It's eased worries for some with loved ones who are patients here. Initially, I was a little concerned. I do have several friends that work here at the hospital, and they kind of reassured me. But if they hadn't heard it from friends working here or the news, they may not have heard it at all. The hospital says there's no protocol that says they have to tell other patients about the possible case. Because it's protected health information, um, I think obviously this may uh, change that a little bit. But at the same time, we are doing um, everything we can to protect patients and our staff to make sure that, um, that there's no risk of transmission. It's garnered mixed feelings from those visiting the hospital. That scares me because um, what if my child had a cough and I had to take him to the urgent care? What happens then? I, can be, I put him at risk and I put myself at risk. It's just such a rare occasion that something like that would happen here. It doesn't seem to affect me whatsoever. Now doctors say Ebola can't be transmitted through the air or casual contact like eating or drinking after someone. It can only be transmitted through direct contacts like an open wound or mucous membranes. Crystal, back to you. All right, thanks so much. Now, according to the CDC, Ebola, quote, poses no substantial risk to the U.S. general population. And doctors say a person with Ebola is not contagious until symptoms appear. As of August 13th, no confirmed Ebola cases have been reported in the U.S. other than the two U.S. health workers evacuated from Liberia. Dr. Kent Brantley is currently undergoing experimental treatment at an Atlanta hospital for Ebola. Officials say he is recovering before he's, but he says there he still has a few more hurdles to clear before he can go home. Brantley and American missionary Nancy Wrightbull were transferred earlier this month to an isolation unit after contracting Ebola while helping patients in Liberia. The World Health Organization says at least 2,100 people have been infected in West Africa and more than half have died. Of course, when the test results on the patient come back, we'll bring them to you on KRQE on air and, of course, online at krqe.com.